and a very warm welcome to yet another interesting edition of the program, CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast of the activities and achievements of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Miriam Abdul Rashid. Coming up, the Business Facilitation Act and its relationship with Karma 2020, amongst others, gets scrutinized. Plus, how to register a business name seamlessly online. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. Some may be lost for one reason or the other. And when documents get lost, to get them replaced is always a challenge, particularly for companies that are not active. So we have to hasten the process for full digitalization of our services. As I have said, since 3rd January of this year, to register a company in Nigeria, you can do it through a lawyer, an accountant, or church secretary. Or if you are the owner of the business, you can do it to yourself. And I didn't make this policy. It's actually a government policy because of our ease of doing business initiatives. Government is concerned, or has been concerned about the cost of doing business. And the cost is not just limited to payment of CAC fees and payment of scam duties. The major component of the cost from analysis carried out is actually the professional fee that is being paid to either a lawyer, accountant, or just secretary. Whereas CAC may charge you 10,000 naira for a company with 1 million share capital and 7,500 naira as scam duties. Most, most professionals don't even tell you what you're supposed to pay as professional as a statutory fees. They give you a long sum. Sometimes that is even 10 times higher than the cost of actual registration. So because of these concerns, and government conscious of its own responsibility to its citizens, and because we have submitted ourselves to annual review then by the World Bank and this of doing business, one of the criteria used by World Bank is to measure not just how quickly businesses are registered, but also the cost of registration. And from analysis, as I have said, the major component of the cost that accounted for more than 55 to 60 percent was actually the fees being charged by professionals engaged in the research process. So, and from survey, most countries across the world you don't require any intermediary to register your business. So, because of that concern, government decided to make it optional. If you choose to go through a lawyer or an accountant, which is a secretary final rule. But there are ordinary people that may not even have the capital to invest. They register in anticipation. Sometimes somebody has to borrow the money, the money to even pay the decision. Why should we impose an additional burden on that person to go through a professional to register his business if he can make himself? So because of to address them, to allay those concerns, the government decided to make it open. And but even with that, because of the old law, there was still a challenge. Welcome back. We start off with another of the many reforms rolled out by the present administration in a bid to improve the economy. You may recall that on February 14, 2023, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, signed the Business Facilitation Miscellaneous Provision Act, commonly referred to as the Omnibus Act. Many commentators believe that the law will enhance growth in the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, sector of the economy. To get further insights on the provisions of the Act, and its impact on Karma 2020. Let's join Mr. Adiola Tolulokwe Shunaike, Assistant Director, Registrar General's Office, in our interview segment. Mr. Tolulokwe Adiola Shunaike, Assistant Director, Registrar Office. Good to see you again, sir. Thank you very much, Medina. Welcome back from the break. Thank you very much. All right. Um, today we're going to be looking at the um, Business Fac uh, Facilitation Act 2022. Mm. I I'm sure our viewers will be in for some kind of um, law jargons, if I'm correct. <laughs> <laughs> but, but talk us through, um, we do understand that they amended some part of karma. Mm. So talk us through that amendment. Okay, um, before I talk about the amendments, um, mm. let me quickly um, 
give a background okay. to the business station miscellaneous okay. provision act 2022 uh, bfa for short um the bfa was passed by the um, two houses the national assembly last year december and then it was assented to by the president okay um, early this year sometime in january um, the business participation act the bfa essentially restates the provisions of the executive order 001 of 2017. Mm -hmm. if you recall that um, order was um, the main objective was to promote transparency and efficiency in the nigerian business environment mm -hmm. now essentially this business participation act also the main objectives are stated in section one okay is to uh, promote the ease of doing business in Nigeria okay. by removing um, bottlenecks, by um, amending the relevant legislations, mm -hmm. you know, to the effect and that um, the reforms in Nigeria are institutionalized, you know. Uh, now, the BFA is what you may describe as an overarching legislation. By that, I mean, some people call it omnibus. Um, legislation. By that I mean a legislation, an instrument that touches on so many other instruments, other okay. legislations. Mm. Yeah. So you find that the BFA touched on KAMA, the okay. Companies and Allied Matters mm. Act. It also touched on the Immigration Act. It touched on the Nigerian Export um, Promotion, Promotion Council Act. Act. Mm. It touched on um, NIPC Act. It touched on Investment and Securities Act. That's the SEC. Okay. It touched on a number. So it is all encompassed. Yes, it touched on a number about about um, nineteen or twenty legislations, really. Wow. No wonder I can see the book very big. Uh, yes, you see, because and, and that is because um, uh, if you remember, if you recall, I said in section one, it says to um, institutionalize all the reforms. Mm. Okay. Now that touch on doing business in Nigeria. Mm. Kama is the primary legislation for business in Nigeria, but there are other legislations okay right that also touch on doing business mostly sectoral now if you amend kama and you don't go to amend those other ones you will not have addressed the issue of is in business okay the doing of business mm. in nigeria so you have an overarching and omnibus legislation as this is as the business legislation act the BFA yes act. that now amends everything that touches on doing business in Nigeria. Okay. The explanatory notes to... Um, um, if you're going to simplify answer. it mm. for somebody that is listening to you. Yes, I mean, just, just as stated in the short title, okay. it says it's an act to provide for the ease of doing business. Okay. So that you ensure transparency mm -hmm. in the business That's environment. That's the thinking behind it. Yes, okay. the effic efficiency in the, in the business environment mm -hmm. and productivity in the business environment. Okay. If it's easy for people to do business, mm. their business is more efficient. Okay. I know... Uh, There'll be so many questions as to but, how easy is it to do business today, mm, especially mm, with the cash crunch and all of that. Mm, but mm. the other question I want to ask is that why is it coming up now in 2022? Ease of business, if I remember, started way down 2016, 2017, when this administration did say their focus will be on ease of doing business. So why is mm. it coming in 2022, okay. about five years later? Yes, uh, reforms are ongoing. Mm. Right. Why reforms, take so long? Re remember that uh, yeah. it took a while before we were able to amend Kama. Oh, yes. And then some other laws were also amended. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was actually something that was um, facilitated, promoted by the PEBEC, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment mm. Council, um, through its secretariat, right? The Enabling Business Environment Secretariat, EBS. Now, their main objective, mandate, is to support agencies and departments, you know, to be able to deliver their mandates see how they can provide support you know, to address challenges, right, to uh, proper or full implementation of their man uh, mandates, discharge of their mandates, you know. And that's why you find that the objective is so that in the business environment, mm. it is easy for people to enter, it is easy for people to operate and grow investment. But now, not easy this to is exit. Something, yes. Not it's, easy to oh, exit. Oh, it's very easy to exit. <laughs> okay. Exit is a choice. Okay. Right, exit is a choice. You don't need to consult any law. No, of course the laws are there. Everything is guided by rules. Okay. You know, even the way we use the rules are guided by rules. Okay. Even marriages are guided by rules. <laughs> so right. every every 
aspect of human life are guided by rules. Okay. Where there is no rule, there is anarchy. Okay. okay? So, um, everything Ibiza and Pebeck does is to the end that is to promote investment in Nigeria, promote, promote uh, doing business in Nigeria. Mm. So, and there are many laws that touch on these things. Mm. So, as one and is coming... And help grow the economy. Yes, as one is coming, you compare with the others. Okay. And then when you find areas of that you need to harmonize areas that you need to go back and look, can we tweak this so that everything is consistent? We're not working against each other, working as a one government okay. system. Then you understand that reforms will take time. They have done this, right? Yeah. This, even this, does not, comp does not fully address the issues. It's not exhaustive. Okay. Next year, they may have to do it again. It's just like you have the Finance Act okay. for every year. Yes. I understand that this is um, conceived as something that from time to time, you go back and look at it. Mm. Are there areas we need to also work on again? We'll do it. Okay. Mm. All right. So let's go to specifics. Um, mm. How is this affecting the operations of the commissions and the company proceedings? Well, again, um, if you look at it, it, uh, it touched, like I said, touch on about so many laws, about 20 of them, mm. but um, by far the most affected is Kama. Okay. While for um, those other laws, just one or two, mm. at most three sections were amended. Okay. For us, in the case of uh, the Company of Salam Maris Act, about 20 sections were actually amended. And okay. you understand that when you also realize that Kama, like I said earlier, is a mm. primary legislation. Okay. For business in Nigeria, okay. you know, it's by under camera. It's unlawful for anybody to do business without registration okay. in Nigeria. Mm. So, so, can you give a rundown? Yeah, um, okay. the first of them, you will see it in uh, section seventy-eight. Okay. Now, section seventy-eight is the section that says um, a foreign company cannot do business in Nigeria mm. except to take steps to first register that business in Nigeria. Okay. So, um, to all intent and purpose, a foreign company, when registered in Nigeria, becomes a Nigerian company, mm. right? Even though it may be a subsidiary of that foreign company. Mm. Now, there were exceptions created under the Act in Section 78 to this rule of registration, mm. compulsory registration for foreign businesses or companies willing, wishing to do business in Nigeria. The first of them is that if that business Right, that company had been exempted under any other company law before this one, okay. before 2020. Don't forget that we had 1990 uh, Companies and Act, Act. Act. And then we had the 1968 Companies Act. We had 1958 Companies Ordinance and all of that. Mm. If that company had gotten exemption under, the, under any of those legislations, mm. those exemptions still continue okay. and are effective under this new one, okay. right? Then the other one is where, before the commencement of this one, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, a, a company has been exempted under a treaty to which Nigeria is a party, right? Mm -hmm. They can be exempted. Those were the two exemptions under Kama 2020. Okay. Now, the uh, BFA has now introduced a third one. Okay. That companies can be exempted from registration by any act of the National Assembly. Oh, okay. And you understand that, I mean, since the National Assembly is responsible for making laws for Nigeria, so they can also make laws to exempt a particular company or companies from the requirement of uh, registration. Mm -hmm. And then it moved on to Section 127, where um, this talks about increase in share capital. Uh -huh. Right? And Section 127 provides for um, um, increase in share capital. Now, if you look at section 127, as it is now in Kama 2020, it will mm. tell you that a company may, right, mm. having a share capital, may in general meeting and not otherwise. Oh, okay. So what that tells you is that it is only the company that has the power to increase the share capital. Okay, not, and the, that, not the individual. Not the directors. Okay. And that they must do at the general meeting. The only way companies take decision. When you say company, essentially it's referring to the collection, the aggregation of all the shareholders, the members. Put together. Together, right? Mm -hmm. That's what forms a company. So when they want to take decisions, they take decisions at meetings. Right? That's why you say company at general meeting. Mm -hmm. That means shareholders meetings. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so for the purpose of increasing its share capital, Section 127 had said only a company at general meeting can do that, right? But what the act has now done is to say, while it is recognized that yes, it is the company that has the power, right, to increase the shares, the company can do that by resolution to the board 
and say, okay, you, the board, go and do it. We'll give you all the powers. Go and do it. Hmm. It can also, in its articles, give the directors the powers. Right? Ultimately, the power is coming from the company. But only that we don't have to meet. We have delegated it. So the board can go ahead and do it. Mm. This, again, is to promote efficiency in company proceedings. Right? right? You can't be calling your, your company, your, your shareholders every time mm. for meetings. The cost of calling for, mm. I, know, I mean, for general meetings is ex, ex, expensive. Time and energy. Time and all of that. Yeah. So, okay, you know, we can just, if you, this is necessary, we want to do it. So go ahead and do it. But there must be that delegation, you know, there must be that authority. That is what um, that amendment to section 127 uh, seeks to do or has done. Then, if you go again, it's amended section 142. Okay. Now, what does section 142 do? Section 142, before um, um, Kama 2020, under Kama 1990, right, a private company, right, can restrict um, um, the, can limit the persons to whom you want to um, allot shares. Okay, there's limitation before now. They can, they can say, we don't want this person. They can say, don't worry, we'll take it. So they have what you call preemptive rights. Before now? Before, under 1990. Yeah. Right, the private companies always had preemptive rights over shares. Okay. Members had that right. If you are creating new shares, we want to take it first. If you cannot take it, then you can give it to somebody outside. So that preemptive now, right has been removed? No, by Kama 2020, that was extended to public companies. Again, the question was, will this promote efficiency? Um, um, knowing the nature of public companies, the fact that the shares are easily, they are tradable at any time. Okay? Mm. Uh -huh. And then when public companies go to the market, right, to, to issue shares, it is for a purpose they want to raise money. And usually these are time bound. So if I'm first as a big company, as a public company, understanding the diffuse nature and dispersed nature of uh, my shareholders, you know, it's large. Mm. A public company can have as much as 500, 1,000 shareholders, right? And they are all scattered all over. Now, the under Kama 2020 section 142, um, um, uh, right, says that before you can allot newly issued shares, to anybody outside the company, mm. you must first offer it to existing shareholders okay. in the proportion of their shareholding. Mm. So if, for instance, uh, my shareholding is 1% as it is now, and you want to create new shares, 1% of those new shares you must first offer to me. Okay. And you must indicate how much it is. Okay. And give me time to decide whether I want to take those shares up or not. Okay. It is only after you have done that and will refuse to take them up that you can then offer them to the public. Failure to do that? Is no oil and void. Yes. So that will not promote efficiency for public companies. Mm. Given the, the nature of public companies. No, it won't. Right, it won't. Mm. So th what the BFA has done is to say, you know what? Let us restrict the application of this section to only private companies. And exempt public companies. Public companies, once they, 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 are, they want to issue shares, they can go ahead, like they have been doing, and issue it to the public. You don't have to first offer it to members. Who will now drag their feet. <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. So uh, um, that is the application of that one. And even for the private companies, when you offer to them, the mm. law did not, was just saying you should give them a time for okay. them to exercise that right, feeling which it is taken that they are not interested in those shares. Mm. But the BFA has now specifically said that must be done within 21, 21 days. Okay. Then um, if you look at 149, okay, section mm. 149, which talks about the powers of the company to um, allot shares, right? Mm. Now, that's allotment. Okay. Now, Section 149 says that for private companies, it started by saying only the company can allot shares, okay. right? And then for private companies, it says private companies, the directors may allot the shares if the general meeting, that's the company, okay. delegates that power to them. Mm. by a resolution, mm. or it is contained in the articles. It's similar to what happened, what it did to one to, I mean, one to seven. Okay. Right? Mm. Uh -huh. Now, again, you find that it's only the private companies that were allowed under Kama 2020, okay. before this amendment, to allot shares, you know, through their directors, for the directors to take that, uh, undertake that proceedings to allot shares. Okay. Right. No. 
Now, what this is now saying is that no, leave it open to every 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 form of conflict. Mm -hmm. Right? Again, you don't have to be calling general meeting every time. Right? It is so you to can promote, save people time and stress. It's all to promote yeah. efficiency in the system. Mm. So if we leave 140, that's 149. Yeah, you mm. go to 154. Okay. Now, what uh, does 154 in Kama 22 prescribe? Mm. It says that when a company allots shares, there must be a return of that allotment to the commission. That's the CAC. Okay. A return means a report. If, um, um, I was thinking it's money. No, no, no. It's the <laughs> form that you but add to. you hear return in Nigeria language, it all has to do with money. <laughs> no, no, this is not money. This okay. is about information. Okay. It notices to us that we have allotted our shares, this number of shares, mm. to these persons in this quantum. Um, I do know that if we go on and on and on, we're going to spend mm. the whole day, you know, looking at mm. this provision. Mm. So, but maybe we'll allow it for another uh, another episode. Mm. Just some few seconds before we wind up. Um, yes, the whole thinking is to make the business environment easier, efficient, productive, mm. and all of that. What about the people, the entities themselves? How easy are they finding this um, BFA? In fact, um, most of these um, amendments to the BFA mm. were. Uh, initiated by operators, oh, okay. not by the regulator. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. For instance, again, okay. that's something we'll talk about in the subsequent one. Okay. You know, mm. this thing by electronic meetings. Mm, okay. You know, ordinarily in Kama 2020, it was restricted to uh, private companies. But again, the act has done. This BFA has done something about it. I'll talk about it now. Okay. I'll leave it for because I know that's subsequent an, an area okay. that everybody's interested. Yes. In. So but I'll leave it, it for done. the next one. Okay. But the BFA has done something. I won't say exactly what it has done okay. about those concerns. Okay. Right. So, but uh, next edition, we'll talk about that. All right. Uh, Mr. Tolo, Adiola, many thanks for your time. Thank indeed. you very much, right. Madina. Great insight there from Tolu Lokwe. Let's now move on to registration proper. Are you a small business owner desirous of formalizing your business? Please come with us as we show you how to do just that seamlessly online. Business name registration. Now that we have reserved the name, let's now proceed to register the business. Step one, on your dashboard, click on the reserve panel. This would bring up your approval history. Step two, click on the start registration button beside your approved name. Step three, under business details, enter your business details and click on save and continue. Step four, under particulars of proprietors, enter the particulars of each proprietor and click on add particulars of proprietor button, then click on save and continue. Step five, under nature of business, enter the nature of business and describe the business by filling in the other nature of business description box and click add nature of business button to add then click the save and continue button to proceed ensure you fill in all fields marked with a red asterisk step six on the document upload scan the means of identification you chose in step four and upload it by clicking the upload button Upload the scanned versions of your signature and passport photograph. Click on save and continue to preview your entries. Step seven, when you have verified your entries, click on proceed to payment to pay for your registration. Remember to remain on the remitter page after you have received a confirmation of payment. You will be automatically redirected to your dashboard where you can download your receipt. When your registration has been approved, your certificate will be automatically generated on your registered panel where you can download and print it. Wow, what are you waiting for? Hurry now to pre.cac.gov.ng to register your business. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and our helplines. On Twitter, find us at CAC Nigeria One. On Instagram and Facebook, Corporate Affairs Commission. Our email is cservice at cac.gov.ng. Our website is www.cac.gov.ng.
and our helplines 081-822-9901600-821-822-9891-090-874-01598 or 090-874-01599 and 090-874-01600. Do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program. Same time, same station. From me, Miriam Abdurashid, and the whole team here, it's bye for now.